is so good. John the 6th chapter, John the 6th chapter. I was looking at John the 6th chapter. In John the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 13. 1 through 13. In John the 6th chapter. 1 through John the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 13. John the 6th chapter. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. In John the 6th chapter, it says, After these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he had did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was now. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company coming to him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that they may eat? And then he said and to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennies worth of bread is not suffice uh, for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, not the Campbell guy here, but Andrew in the Bible, on his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are thee among so many? And Jesus said, Make them men sit down. Now there was much grass in that place. So the men sat down in numbers, about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed the, the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. I want to talk to you today from a simple message that I wanted to talk about, the leftovers of Thanksgiving. But I want to talk to you today from the subject, Little Becomes Much in the Master's Hand. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor on your right and your left, say, little becomes much in the master's hand. I want to talk today from little become much. Lord, I thank you that I will decrease so you can increase. God, I want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor because you are worthy to be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated today when we talk about little becomes much in the master's hand. I want to share with us today that some of us may look back and say what we have is not enough. But I've quoted this and I've taught on this and I've preached this from Ephesians 6, 3 and 20. Where it says to us, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. As I was get done and many of us had family all over for Thanksgiving. I had family over for Thanksgiving and after we ate it looked like that we did not eat anything. And I'm telling you I ate three times for Thanksgiving and uh, I mean I ate all I can eat and my Aunt Ada had made me a cake and before Thanksgiving I even ate a piece of that cake. And you know, I have to confess, I've been selfish because I ain't gave nobody a piece of that cake but Christy. And I almost ate all that cake. So I'm, I want to confess to God because if got me in eating is a sin, I ate so much, man, I have to ask God to forgive me. Is that anybody here today that can ask God, Lord, if you can just forgive me for all I ate, God. I know I didn't eat meat, but I mess, I, mess, I, I made arrangements because of the sweets. God, I ate so much dressing, God. I just ask you to forgive me for that as I preach this message because the Bible said that if thou, consent, if thou confess his sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so I asked him right now. Then Mother Kelly, as I was getting done eating about 8 o'clock, my brother called me. Well, I was so happy when Donnery called me. Watch Donnery call me and he said, bro, I'm getting off of work. And he said, bro, if you don't mind, I'm on my way. Watch, I, was, I didn't tell him I was so happy. Watch, I was happy. The reason I was happy because all the turkey that they didn't eat, Donnery took home. All the dressing, Donnery took home. I'm telling you, I gave Donna Ray two 
plate full of, I mean, there was an aluminum pan full of food. So I, knew, I gave Don away so much food, and then when he got ready to leave, I gave him all the drinks that was by the door. The Christy gave him some Gatorade. And then I said, Don away, there's a gallon of tea in the icebox. Won't you take that with you? Because what I did not want to do is, is I did not want to throw over the leftovers. See, I ain't got no kids in my house, but he got three kids. He waited until he was almost 60 to have another baby. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's just something, man, that I was so happy because I did not want the leftovers to go. So what I decided to do was I decided to, Lord, after they left out of there, I went and I said, God, I know that you gave me a message, but it's after Thanksgiving. So I want to talk about the little. How many of you know that God can take a little and to turn it into a lot? So it leads me to our text today. In the fifth chapter, Jesus had just healed a man by the pool of Bethesda. And as he had healed this man, the Bible says that he was there for 38 long years. And after 38 long years, uh, what they begin to do is they begin to follow Jesus. If you rewind it over to the second chapter, Jesus was over there at the Canaan and he had turned water in the wine. Is there anybody really know that God is a miracle worker? When you look back over your life, you can see where God has brought you from. You can testify that there's been times that you've had some lack, but God has made a way out of nowhere. Is there anybody that can testify that what little that you have, that you almost gave up, but you put it in God's hand? Can I just tell somebody today, if you put it in God's hand, he'll make a way out of nowhere. If you put it in God's hand, it's, uh, the songwriter said, it's like this, it's like that, but it's all in God's hand. And I don't know about you today, but if I can take my time and preach this text, and where can I walk you up to the fifth chapter? And in the fifth chapter, he had just healed the man over by the pool of Bathsheba. And as they were leaving there, the Bible says that as they were on their way over to the Sea of Tiberias, and as they were on their way over that way, watch, he had done so many miracles. Watch, he started out that they didn't believe him, but when he started doing miracles, the Bible tells me that they got over there, that there was 5,000 men that followed him. And these men followed them. They didn't count the women and the children. So no telling how many people were over there. Can I paint the picture for somebody that didn't go to Sunday school, somebody that didn't go up in BTU, somebody that didn't get a chance to go over to vacation Bible school. This is when they say that he can take five loaves of bread and two fish and feed a multitude. Is there anybody in the house that can testify that you had a mother that can take a little and turn it into a lot? Is there anybody in the house that can testify that you've been able to realize that you didn't know how you were going to make it, but when you look back over your life, and see what God has done. You can say, Lord, I thank you for the journey that you brought me through. Is there anybody that can testify? I don't know about you, but I grew up in the country, and they, I'm telling you, I don't eat chitlins today because I had to eat them when I was there. I, I'm telling you, I, I don't eat hoghead cheese, brother God, because I'm telling you, what that is, that's everything that they don't throw away of the hog. Is there anybody that can testify? I had an auntie that can take a 12 dozen, take a dozen of eggs, put some milk in it, and stretch it, and feed 16 kids. Is there anybody in the house that knows, and it wasn't no leftovers. Anybody know that little becomes much in the master's hand? Come on, somebody ought to talk to me. I'm going to get on my text. I want to stay with my text today, but, you know, and uh, and then, you know what, uh, I'm going to tell you something, Zach. My mama came over for Thanksgiving, and she bought me a lemon pie, and I'm, I mean a lemon cake, and I wasn't giving that away because, you know what, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I had to ask God for forgiveness. Watch, I ate so much sweets. I ate, I had enough sweets. I ain't got to worry about your Christmas. Amen. And then I'm going to get that sweet, I'm going to get that peach cobbler from Mama Lynn on Christmas. I already put my order in, so it's going to be coming up. And then I got some brownie sheet brownie. I already got that coming in. I know God's going to hook me up, right? God's going to hook me up. Amen. And so so how many of you know that a uh, little becomes much? And the Bible says that, uh, Brother Damon, the Bible says that when they got over to the sixth chapter, and they got over that way, and I just want to tell somebody, God uses what you have, and no matter how small it is. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, God can use what you have. And, and no matter how small it is, the Bible says in verse number one, it says, In these things Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is in the Sea of Tiberium, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles. So many people were following Jesus because of his miracles. And when they followed Jesus because of his miracles, here Jesus gets over there, and Jesus went up to the mountain, and he set his disciples down. And the Bible says, And the Passover feed the Jews were now. When Jesus had lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him, and he said unto Philip. Now listen to what he says. He says, Philip, uh, when shall we buy bread that they may eat? So what he was saying was, this is the problem. Anybody ever been in a problem? 
Come on, y'all talk to me. Y'all, yeah, come on. Have, have any of y'all ever had a problem? Any of y'all ever had a problem? Because I'm going to walk the text. That's all I'm going to do today. I'm going to walk the text. And, and so here Jesus is. Somebody shout Jesus. And here Jesus is. Jesus says. And Jesus says, he says, what well, shall we buy bread? Now, 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 get this, Keisha. He knows everything. He sees everything. He automatically knows exactly that he's going to feed 5,000. Can I tell you that even though you recognize that problem, Jesus has already fixed that problem. You just got to trust. God. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So sometimes Jesus will ask you the question just to see where your faith is. And I just came to tell somebody today that the only reason you're going through what you're going through is because Jesus knows all about your faith. He already knows about the problem. The Bible says in verse number six, and he said, then he said to them to prove him for himself, he knew what he would do. Can I tell you that God knows what he's going to do? before he even ask the question. You know why? Because he's Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's Jehovah Rapha. That's why when sickness come upon you, you got to be able to say, no weapon formed against you. I, I, I want to teach, but I need to go on and preach, Mama Lynn, because I know him as Jehovah Rapha because he's been my healer. He's healed my body. He's kept me in perfect peace. He's met every need. He's been a mind regulator. He's been a heart fixer. He's been a bridge over troubled waters. He's been a shelter in the midst of a storm. He's the man that came down through 42 generations that they stretched him wide on an old rugged cross. He's the man that before they even got over there, he was the man that said, let there be light and there was light. He was the man that was able to step out of darkness and to call those things to be not as they are. And I just came to encourage somebody to tell you that little become much in the master's hand. Somebody may have wrote you off, but Jesus says he knew you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Somebody may have said that you could not do it, but the Bible declared that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. And I just came to tell somebody today, you may have more bills than you have money, but my God shall supply all of your needs. You may have lost loved ones and feel like you're all alone, but my Bible says the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Can I tell somebody today, yea, though you walk through whatever valley you're going through, God is right there with you, because my Bible tells me that little is much, little may become much in the master's hand. And I want to tell you today that you just got to trust God. The Bible says that he had asked Philip. And he says, Philip, and Philip began to tell him. And Philip began to share with him. And he says, Philip, where can we find and buy get, get this much bread? And I don't know about you, but be careful when you talk to the bread of life. Because he was the bread of life. He was the bread that came down from heaven. He was the one that they fed uh, in the, and when Moses name was in the wilderness. He came down. Am I helping somebody today to tell you that little become much in the mouth? Master's hand. Billy, while they were wandering alone in the wilderness wash, the Bible says that he sent mamma down from heaven. It's amazing how we go from the Old Testament to the New Testament and we forget what God has done. Can I tell you, as you get ready to go into 2025, don't forget what he done in 2022. Don't forget what he done in 2020. Don't forget what he done in 2019. I don't have to go back to the 60s to remember what God has done. I can go all the way back to 2019 when the whole world shut down. People were trying to figure out how you're going to make it. And that prince used to sing a song. Well, what we're going to do is 1999. Can I tell you, it's 2024 going into 2025. And God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. He woke me up this morning. Damon, he's been so good to me that he's taken little old me and probably where I'm at today. When I look back over my life and see what God has done. The Bible, somebody shout the Bible said that Philip said to him, he said, Master, 200 pieces of bread is not enough for them. Can I tell somebody the boy's five low? Can I just slow down? I'm trying to get to the five loaves and two fish, but I don't want to get there yet. Slow down, Reverend. Tell me, put the brakes on it. Somebody shout, put the brakes on it. Put the brakes on it. Put the brakes on it. Eddie, you ain't going to wash me today. I got to put the brakes on it, baby. got to put the brakes on it. And then the Bible says in verse number seven. He said, Philip answered 200 pennies of bread does not suffice for thee. He said that every one of them may take a little. And then he says, so what Philip said is, he said, you know what God, he says now, if we got the bread, listen, he says to him, he says now, if we had 200 pennies, now that's, I think they said about eight months of salary or eight years, one or the other. He said, that's not even enough to feed all of them. So what he was saying to them, he said, God, you know what, what I have is not enough. How many of y'all ever felt like what you have was not enough? Right. Come on, 
I'm going to be honest with yourself. Have you all ever felt like what you had is not enough? And then one of his disciples, Andrew, somebody shout Andrew. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, he said, there's a lad over there. Look at that. The Bible says in verse number 9, he said, there's a lad over there which had five barley and loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Because somebody is looking over your life and saying they don't know how you made it. Somebody's looking over your life and saying, what brought you through where you at? And somebody, somebody is surprised that you're still alive. But when, they look, when you look back over your life and see what God has done for you, you can shout, if it had not been for the Lord on my... Am I talking to anybody today that can say that they counted you out? They didn't believe that you should be where you're at? That, that, look, what, look, what, look what he says to them. He says, he says, there's a lad over there. I don't know if the lad was in high school. I don't know if the lad was in... I don't know if the lad was from Coweta. I don't know if the lad was from North Tulsa. I don't know if he was from South Tulsa. He could have been a lad from Coyote. I don't know. I don't know. But it was a lad. And the lad was a little boy. So the Bible says, Mama Lynn, he says, and there was a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they so among so many? But look what Jesus says. Jesus already has it. Somebody shout, go Jesus, go Jesus, go. Y'all got to get better than that. Somebody shout, go, Jesus, go, Jesus, go. Come on, y'all got to do better than that. Somebody shout, go, Jesus, go, Jesus, go. Ah, y'all got it now. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. See, y'all got to be careful when you push God because there may be somebody here that's needing a miracle right now, and I'm just trying to set the stage for a miracle. So when, now, 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 the rest of my sermon, I want you to help me. So when I do this, I want you to say it three times. Okay, now we got to try that again because y'all don't have any rest of my message. Okay, so, and Jesus said unto them, make the men sit down. And then it says, and there was so much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the numbers of about 5,000. And so now Jesus had just asked Simon Peter, his disciple, uh, brother, and he says to Simon Peter's brother, he, and he says to them, and Simon Peter answers and said, there's a lad over there. Can I just tell you, the boy did not hold back his lunch. And so the Bible says, well, how do you know that? And the Bible says, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks. Now this is where I want to help us at today, is that when it seemed like it's a little and you need more you just got to give it to Jesus and it's amazing what Jesus done and what Jesus done Tina is Jesus took it and he be, and he prayed for it and I just want to ask you is there any grateful people in the house that would testify that just when you thought you were going to give up you fell down on your knees and you didn't just sing it but you said father I stretch my hand today no other help I know if I withdraw thy hand from me where would I go so the Bible says that Simon oh, looked over there, Simon Peter, Andrew's brother, and he said, there's a lad over there. And he said, over there that lad has five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus sums them and he says to them, he says, okay. He says, sit them down while you're trying to figure it out. God's already worked it out. I don't intentionally put praise music on when you come in. What I do is, is I got praise on because you ought to come in here with a praise already down on your soul. And sometimes we miss our blessing because we're trying to figure out how service is going to go. When I walk on the church door, I come in with a praise because I know that praise is messed with the enemy. The enemy doesn't like it, Tina, when I'm going through but I can say, let it rain on me, Lord. I can tell God I'm expecting a miracle. I like it when they sing the song. I know if I put old Jesus on the main line, he's going to stand up, clap his hand, get his tambourine because he knows that there's something about the name of Jesus. Is there anybody know that there's something about the name of Jesus? It's the sweetest name I know. And the Bible says that when they got over that way, he saw the little lad and the little boy was not stingy. The little boy knew that God's shovel was bigger than his. The little boy knew that if I give it to God, God can make a way out of no way. And so the Bible says that Jesus takes the five loaves of bread, the two fish, and he begins to give thanks. I just want to put a comma here. Is there anybody that can thank God that they brought you a mighty long way? Is there anybody that can thank God that your children are still yet in perfect peace? Is there anybody that can thank God 
God that you got a roof on your head. Is there anybody that can thank God for his grace and his mercy? Because when I woke up this morning, it was God's new grace that woke me up. When I woke up this morning, it was mercy that kept me. Is there anybody in the house? I was going to teach, but I'm going to preach because I'm in the water now that can tell God thank you. The Bible says that he gave the little lad and the lad gave him the five loaves of bread and the two fish. And the Bible says that he lifted up the heaven. Can I tell you the reason some of us will never get blessed is because you keep looking down. I, I, I ought to tell somebody, you ought to look up to the hills from which cometh your help. Look up and tell God thank you. It's not how you feel. It's because you know God will or make a way out of no way. Can I tell you, it's not about the weapons coming at you because I know what the word says. The word says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's not because of what I don't have because I know what the word says. The word says my God shall supply all my needs. Is there anybody in the house that can tell the Lord thank you? The Bible says that the lad gave him his sack lunch. Can I tell you, it may be a sack lunch to you, but it's a miracle to God. Is there anybody know that God is a miracle worker? He's a water walker, a tongue talker that can make ways out of no way. Can I tell you today that God is able to make a way out of no way? I shut my Bible so I can walk on through it because I don't want to keep on putting the karma there. I want to tell you what God can do. God can make a way out of no way. The Bible says that he took it, he broke bread, he sent them down in multitudes. He told them to sit down. And when they sit down, the Bible says he had broke it. Can I tell somebody today, God knows how to break you. Can I tell you real quick? Can I go on in? Can I tell you, has anybody been broken before? Listen, the Bible says that God had taken the bread and he broke it. And when he took the bread, he broke it and he distributed it. Can I tell somebody today, you may be broken, but God, God specializes. Is there anybody that can testify that God specializes? You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a living witness that God knows how to break. If, if God didn't break me in, 19, in 1996, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. God broke me, put me in a dark situation. And he says, I, you've been running long enough. Can I tell you, when you run from God, he'll break you. When you don't give to God, he'll break you. When you don't praise God, he'll break you. God will bring you in a dark situation to where you know that he is light. If you don't believe it, go to the hospital. He knows how. There's people that know that God specializes. Does anybody know that God specializes? I know God will specializes. Have you ever noticed that when bad things happen, people call on God? I remember on 9-11, Lord, when the world was going crazy, God was able, when, the, when one brain hit one, and then I tell you, everybody was calling on God. In 2019, when COVID hit, the first thing they said, it just called on God. Can I tell you, I'm not going to wait till something bad happened. I'm going to call on God before it happened. So when it does happen, I know how to call on God. I was calling on him when I was broke. I was calling on him when I didn't know what I was going to do. But let me tell you, now that I got more than enough, I can still yet call him because I know he can take more than enough and break me. So I have to call him. Is there anybody here that can tell the Lord thank you? You can tell him thank you because it make ways out of no way. Can I go on and hasten to get on over to serve the Lord's Supper? The Bible says that he took the five loaves and the two fish and he fed them. And then the Bible, this is what I like about it. Then the Bible says that he said to them, let them eat all that they want. Can I tell you, God is a God that more than enough. It look like y'all ain't lost no weight. I know I gained 26 pounds and I did lose. But let me tell you, God is still the God of a more than enough. And the Bible says us and tells us that he took up 12 basket loads. And let me tell you, George, the little lad came with five loaves and two fish, but he left with 12 baskets. Can I tell you, you may think it's too little. You may not think your resume is what it ought to be. But I'm here to tell you, if you put it in God's hand, he'll meet every need for you. How do you know God will meet every need? Because the Bible reminds me that God knows how to unlock miracles. I had to wake some of y'all up. Listen, God knows how to unlock miracles. God knows how to unlock miracles. You just got to trust God. The Bible says that uh, Jesus now takes up the 12 baskets. He takes the 12 baskets up. He gives it to the boy. Can I tell you, when you give to God, God will give back to you. What you think is too little, God will continue to give back. Well, can I tell you what? Listen, you can't beat God given. You can't beat God giving your time, your talent, and your treasure. When you give it to God, God will multiply it back. Can I tell you, I, I want to tell you this. Listen, the Bible says that the lad began to leave with more than he had. And the reason he left with more than he had 
is because what he did was he gave it to Jesus. I want to ask you today, what do you have to give for Jesus? Do you think it's too small? Do you think it's not worthy? Listen, once you give it to God, when you give it to God, listen, I love giving God my problems. You know why I love giving God my problem? Because he's a problem solver. I tell you, some of y'all would be, some of y'all would think I'm crazy if you was in my prayer closet when I'm praying to God. I don't hold nothing back from God. I, I mean, I, I mean, you would say, man, you talk to God like that? Yeah. Because let me tell you something. The Bible says that, that God answers my prayers. And all my prayers are not prayers of, of thanks at times. Some of my prayers are concerns. But the thing I like about God is, is I know I can give it to God. Listen, once you give it to God, God will make a way out of no way. Listen, the boy wasn't just a spectator. The boy wasn't a spectator. Listen, let me tell you what he did. He became part of the miracle. Do you know God wants you to become a part of the miracle? When we trust God with what we have, we join him in his work of blessing others. Listen, you all blessed over 80 families for Thanksgiving. Give yourself a hand. You all blessed over 80. Listen, we don't go to the iron gate just because we go to the iron gate. We go to the iron gate to be a blessing. Come on, give God another hand praise for that. Listen, don't be a spectator. Come on, listen. Be a part of, somebody say, be a part of the miracle. God, listen at this. God's blessing include overflow. Listen, the 12 baskets of, of, of leftovers wasn't just an excess. They were a testament of God's abundant provision. Do you know God wants to bless you? Do you really know God wants to bless you? I'm glad only three of y'all said that because I really believe only three of y'all believe God's going to bless you. I do, I do. Listen, listen. Do you really believe God's going to bless you? Listen, when you know God's going to bless you, listen, you know God's going to bless you. I'm excited. I'm excited. I need to slow down to make a few points. I'm excited that Keisha is on a drive for the iron gates. I'm excited. You know why I'm excited, Keisha? I'm excited because the church is not going to be a spectator. The church is going to be a miracle worker with God. Listen, five is grace. Somebody shout grace. He had five loaves. That's grace. Somebody shout grace. So God's grace was good that he woke us up. Two is partnership. Somebody shout partnership. Come on, shout partnership. You know, the best partnership you can have is with Jesus. The best partnership is Jesus. Listen, listen. I want to say this. Listen. The miracle didn't happen. All expecting a miracle. Step. On water as he took the first when faith and trust are the keys to seeing God's power in our life. You can talk. I have somebody to send me some scriptures. I had somebody send me some scriptures. They sent me some scriptures. And I sent them back a message and I said the scriptures are great, but don't hide behind the scripture. Live the scripture. See it's easy, it's easy to put the scripture out there. But are you gonna live the scripture? The scripture tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I tell people all the time, all of my days are not good days. But I got faith to walk as if all of my days are my best days. Why? Because faith isn't something things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, small acts of kindness makes a huge impact. Small acts of kindness. You know, I, I, just, a, just a simple word. Do you know we use our tongue more to tear people down? We use our tongue to tear people down. Some people are just so unhappy. Some people, I know how, no matter how good you are, they always see the worst in everything. But you've got to be able to say, thank God. Is anybody that can truly thank God? You know, I, I tell you all the time, we've all had some bad things happen in our life. You know, but if you stay stuck on the past, you'll never see the future. 